Welcome. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Well, let me just start by saying it's been a very productive summer. Um, meaning, I had to go in and have knee surgery, my knee replaced, and along with my staff, I hobbled around this summer and we were able to build our basketball team back with six newcomers and scholarship guys, and then we got four walk on. So we got 10 new people to our ball club. A lot of work has got to be done before we open up against Marion here in our first practice game. So with that being said, um, I'll open the floor up for questions. All right, Coach, we'll start with Jeff Rab down in the front. Raise your hand if you have a question, and please identify yourself and who you work for, please. Coach, how are you doing today? Great. My knee feels great. <laughs> hey, I wanted to start with uh, Mackenzie Abaco. Uh, those of us who had a chance to see him a lot in high school and AU saw a lot of offensive ability there. I'm curious, what do you see and how impactful do you feel he can be for you guys this year, especially on the offensive end, with the points you need to replace? Only time will tell. You know, he's capable of putting the basketball in the hole. He's shown that this summer. Um, you know, we got to help him as coaches, and put him in the best position possible to be successful and help us. So, you know, I'm, I'm expecting big things from him, but I'm not putting a lot of pressure on him. He's, He's a freshman. Um, I think when you're building a basketball team, you got to reach out and get a little bit from everybody. You know, the freshmen that were freshmen last year that are sophomores, they got to step up and play like sophomores. And the juniors that are seniors, like X and Galloway, they got to give us more. Sophomores, got to give us more. So, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot that's got to be done between now and the time we step on the floor against Marion and start playing actual basketball. Um, but McKenzie's a big part to the puzzle. That's why we went and recruited him. Alex, back left. Oh, is it inside the hall? Just curious, um, you, you mentioned needing more from X. What exactly do you mean by that? And what maybe are the two or three things you look at um, going into the season that he needs to do well for you guys to be successful as a team? Well, I thought two years ago, make no mistake about it, we got in the tournament because of Xavier Johnson and his play coming down the home stretch. Um, last year was a setback year for him. We didn't come into last season thinking that we would lose our starting point guard. And that was a blow for us in the stretch where we struggled to win games. And, um, you know, this year, you know, X has been, he's played a, a more basketball games in college than anybody on our ball club. So I expect him to lead, you know, be a point guard and, and be a leader on and off the floor. And, put us in position to win basketball games. That's what it's all about. Zach, front left, and Todd. Mike, following on with X, I mean, obviously this time a year ago, he wouldn't have expected to be here just in the sense he thought he'd be out of eligibility and moved on. How have you seen him approach just all the things that you talk about needing from him, the day-to-day, -day, the leadership, the, the things that maybe, again, he wouldn't have expected to be in this role, but now embracing it and really trying to sort of be everything you and this team need him to be? I think he's doing all the right things uh, along with Galloway. I've named both of those two guys captains. Uh, and But again, we got to play games. We got to get better in practice on both ends of the floor. And uh, he's got to play a role in that. So, uh, you know, I'm hard on captains. You know, I've always been that way. Bob Knight was hard on me as a, as a captain when I was here. And, uh, you just, you're not given that title just to be given it. Uh, you gotta earn it and, and you gotta
got to be held accountable in terms of not only putting yourself in position to help us win, but getting guys to play at a high level around you. That's important. Todd, front left, and Rick. Todd Golden with CNHI. Uh, Mike, your third year, obviously. And uh, last year I heard you say a few times when you answered questions that, you know, some things were still new to you in terms of being a coach. Now that you're, uh, you are on your third year, how comfortable are you with being a college coach, all the things that go into it, recruiting, NIL, et cetera? And what expectations do you have for yourself in your third year, and how does that project to expectations for the program? I took this job to win Big Ten titles and national titles, and I've fallen short the first two years. And I'm always optimistic as a coach when I go into a season, and this season is no different. You know, we got to go and win a Big Ten title, and then once we get here, Fortunate to get into tournament play, then we figure it out there. But uh, this summer, you know, I recruited more. We had to. You know, we lost four seniors. We lost three guys that left. Basically, we lost ten guys last year with the two walk-ons as well. Uh, so we had to go out and, and build our team back. Pleased with the players that we brought in, uh, knowing that when you add a lot of pieces to your team, there's a lot of work that comes with that. And I'm not pleased and happy right now where we are as a ball club because there is a lot of work that's still left on the table that we got to get these guys to understand who we are and what we're about and, and how we want to play on both ends of the floor. And only time will tell. We start official practice on the 26th where I can I can get them a little longer now. You know, that hour, four hours a week, it's okay. But it's not like being out on the floor, you know, two and a half, three hours. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Rick, second row left, and Mike. Yeah, Mike, Rick Bozich, WDRB in Louisville. Uh, you mentioned the guys you lost. I mean, Trace was here four years, Race was here six. Cops started for two years. Uh, obviously, you know that Huchifino, first round pick, he lost a lot of quality players. How do you go begin to put a new lineup together, and do you anticipate a different style of play this year? Well, again, I think practice and competition and practice will unveil who, who starts. Because um, I don't know right now who's really going to be the star. And that's important, but what's important to me, along with my staff, is getting players to play at a high level and playing together and doing it the right way on both ends of the floor. That's what's going to be the driving force in winning basketball games, I think. And, um, you know, I think all our guys are curious, they're eager, they come to work, uh, they accept coaching. And that's important when you're talking about building a team. Um, so only time will tell. You know, I mean, it's hard to sit here and predict anything. I would never do that anyway. But at the end of the day, hard work, guys dedicated to what we're trying to get done will put us in position to win basketball games, I think. What about style of play? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, if I asked you guys, did we post the basketball more than we ran pick and roll last year, you would probably say we did, but we didn't. 53% of our play last year was pick and roll basketball. 47% was posting the basketball, where the first year we dominated the post with Trace. I would have been foolish not to utilize it, but we expanded him out on the floor a little bit last year, and he was able to do some things in that area. So. You know, I don't know that, you know, I'm still looking at our style of play. I think you still have to mix it up. You know, you got to have pulse play. And, you know, everybody's playing pick and roll, which I was accustomed to doing in the pros. So it's not nothing new to me, but uh, only time will tell in terms of our style and where we go with it. Mike, second row left. Yeah, Mike, well, Mike Nyslock from the Bloomington Herald Times. Uh, you mentioned the turnover of 10 new faces. Does your experience as an NBA coach with free agency and all that make you better suited to sort of handle the transfer portal era and all the 
kids coming in and out. Do you think that helps kind of being able to build a team when you're used to, you know, in the NBA having to, to flip over a roster quick, quicker than, you know, college used to be? Well, I did it. I did it in Atlanta where uh, we flipped that roster within two, three years. But I, I, mean, I can't sit here and say, look, I got to wait. I don't want to wait to, you know, my clock's ticking. I want, you know, everything this year. Uh, but in New York, I did it in one year where we bought in nine players uh, and surrounded Carmelo Anthony with nine different players and was able to go and win the division and, and, and get to the second round of the playoffs. So, I mean, that was a, a good run for our ball club, but I had veteran guys when I did that. Um, I'm dealing with young players now, so you have to be patient with a lot of these young, young guys. And uh, I understand that, but but then on the flip side, I got to be myself and I got to coach, coach and push and try to get guys to do things at a higher level than they, than probably they're used to doing. So that's that's going to be important moving forward, I think. Seth, front row right, then uh, Zion. Seth Tao with the Daily Hoosier. Uh, Mike, your sophomores, uh, CJ, Caleb, and Malik, just what, how do you see them attack this offseason, and what steps are you looking for those guys this season? You know, the beauty about this summer, a lot of these guys, they stuck around, uh, and they put in the work, uh, especially CJ and uh, Caleb Banks. Uh, I'm just, I'm expecting more out of them. They're not freshmen anymore. I need more, you know. We need it as a as a ball club, and um, and they're working in that area. I mean, they've done some pretty good things this summer for us, but you know, we still as a team we have a ways to go yet. Zion, front right, and Mason. Zion Brown, Indy Star. Going back to the roster turnover, kind of when you're in the portal or you're getting those late recruits like McKenzie, what type of players did you try to approach and try to go after this year? Well, you're talking about this this summer? Yeah, throughout the summer. Transport. Well, again, you know, when I, I might have told Zach in our interview, listen, when I took this job, I made it clear to my staff that we had to go and recruit the best players. And they were like, what, what the damn, what he just got here? You know, you can't, you just can't go to the top. And I'm like, why not? And I think we've positioned ourselves to be able to sit at the table with all the top players. And that's not to say you're gonna get them, but if you're not sitting there, then you don't have an opportunity at all. And, you know, McKenzie kind of stumbled into our, our hands, and which was an amazing story. I mean, I don't wanna to get too deep into it, but at the end of the day, his mom gave us an opportunity to recruit him. And once he got here, we were able to close the deal and keep him here. So, um, same thing with Ware. You know, I mean, this is a seven-two guy that a lot of a lot of teams wanted, but it takes work. My staff, uh, coaching staff, have done a tremendous job and put me in position to be able to get to the table and sit with these guys and be able to talk Indiana basketball and what I think and how I think they can help us and how I can help them. Mason, third row left. Coach, Mason Williams with Hoosier.com. You've talked in the past about the importance of scheduling tough early in the preseason. You've got a, new, a lot of new faces this year. How do you expect that, that gauntlet that you've put together in a non-conference to kind of uh, form the team chemistry this year? Well, it's going to put us in position. We, we, we have a tough schedule this, this season. You know, I, I thought the last two years our schedule was tough. I, my thing is, it doesn't matter who you play. You know, if you're not ready to play and, and ready to play at a high level, any team in college basketball can beat you. I like competition. That's just, that's my nature. That's how I've been all my life as a player and coach. You can't be scared of competition, man, or you in the wrong game. And. This season is a tough season, you know, in terms of scheduling and the, and the teams that we filled it this year to play. But it's what it is, man. We just got to take it one game at a time and see what happens. Tom, back left. Hey, Coach. Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Indiana. 
one of the things about when you sit at the table with the best players is when they get here, that much like Jalen last year, they might only be here for a year. Uh, with a six-year point guard and, that, and those potential things this year, do you feel like there's more of a sense of urgency to be really good fast? Because it, this is with this group, it's really just maybe just one year with this this specific group. Well, you know, that's a great question. Um, there's always urgency on my part. I mean, I want to win now. And, yeah, losing Jalen and Trace, to, that's huge. But, hell, it gives other guys an opportunity to step up and play and be noticed and make a difference and help your team win basketball games because that's what it's all about. Um, I mean, I like our, our players that we've, we've landed. We just got to, I got to, and it's on me, I got to coach them up and get them ready to play basketball. That's what it's all about. Coach Backrow, TV. Hey, Mike, Dominique Yates, WLKY in Louisville. Yeah, you mentioned the goals of wanting to win a Big Ten title. From your first two years, what were your observations of the conference? And just, you know, what will it take for your guys to try to get over that hump and win one? Well, again, I thought we put ourselves in a pretty good position the last two years. Uh, I mean, in the tournament, we were right there. You know, I just didn't get them over the hump, man. And, you know, that's something that I live with every day of my life. Somehow I got to get them over the hump. You know, I'm the coach, and I got to get them over the hump where we can hang another banner in there. I mean, that's that's all I think about, man. I don't think about anything. It's not about me. It's about these student athletes that I've I filled it this year for our ball club, and I got to try to put them in the best position possible to be successful. Back row, middle. Mike, Andrew Chernoff, Wish TV. You mentioned X and Trey as two guys who are captains on this team. How have you seen them grow into those roles as captains? Well, they've earned it. I mean, you know, unfortunately, X didn't get a chance to, to show what he did the first year last season because of his injury. And, I, and make no mistake about it, I, I say it, you know, you guys probably couldn't see it and, and didn't write it about it enough. But losing Xavier Johnson last year was huge for our team. I mean, it hurt us, and and we were able to regroup and, and, and recover from it, and a lot of that had to do with Jalen and the supporting cast. I mean, we just, we didn't feel sorry. We, you know, we got after it in practice and was able to, to maintain. Um, X is back this year, and again, like I said, he's, he's done it a little bit longer than most of the young men that we got on our team, so I expect more. And he's wearing that captain title on his head. So that's, you got to give me more. You got to do more to help us win basketball games. And he will. Third row right, and then Jack. Alexa Ross, CBS 4, Fox 59. Coach, when you look at what Xavier having had to sit down, do you feel like he's even hungrier now to be back in there? Has it seemed like he skipped a beat, or is he kind of just picked off right where he left off? I think he's hungry. Um, you know, it's probably, I'm sure it was the first time he's ever been hurt where he's missed practically the whole season. Um, so I, he's got to be hungry. I mean, this is his last go around. I mean, he, he can't come back. I mean, hell, how, how many years has he played college? What is it, six years for him? Hell, that's, he's an old man. <laughs> hell, he can't come back for seven. So he's got to give us all he can give us this year to make, you know, to make it right. I mean, he, but I, I do think he's hungry. Absolutely, I do. All right, Jack, back left, last one. Hey, Mike, Jack Ankeny, Sports Illustrated, Indiana. It seems like Khalil Ware has a ton of potential, but kind of had an up and down freshman season. How do you get him to reach that full potential? Well, when I recruited that young man, I told him, you cannot go back and get what happened the year before. You can't. I mean, the words out, you know, they, they knocked you and said, hey, you're lazy, you don't work hard. And, and if you make a commitment to me, that's got to change. And, you know, I'm not always the easiest coach to play for, but I'm in your corner and I'm fair and I want what's best for you and my ball club. And he made the commitment to me and I'm going to push him 
play at a higher level, to help us win basketball. I can't, I can't think of or worry about what happened in Oregon. That's gone. You know, he's got to move forward and build a new life here with the Indiana basketball team. That's what it's all about to me. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of the evening.